Hello, and welcome to Weed and Grub. How's the action on that baby? It's super clicky. Is it? Does yeah. it have a nice uh, click to it? It's all click, no stick. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that should be Apple's slogan. Get at me, Apple. <laughs> <laughs> when they come out with new computers every single time, mm-hmm. all click, no, no stick. stick. That's Wait, right. For for everyone listening, can we hear like a K or maybe an L or a D? Or can we just hear you typing briefly? Oh, yeah. Here, hang on a second. That's yeah. nice action. That's nice, Real right? Real nice action. Oh, I think I just deleted a file. Fuck. Okay, well. <laughs> well, <laughs> well there goes the day's work. <laughs> congrats on your new laptop that uh, you also destroy as soon as you touch, I guess. I'm I mean, so sorry to hear. Thank you. It was one of those, like, fucking silver lining to a crappy situation because my hard drive just bit the dust so hard that all of a sudden it just, whoa, someone's trying to come through your floor again. Every time. Your neighbors are crazy. Can't wait to move. Um, <laughs> I can't wait for you to move, too. Uh, yeah, like I just opened my computer and it was like, it's not here. We don't know where anyone went. It's the shrug emoji. Yeah, there's just nobody here anymore. We don't know where your hard drive is. Ah, fuck. And the Genius Bar, um, person who helped me was so nice. And he was like, I just, I don't know what to tell you. Like you could go to a data recovery place or not, but maybe just get a new one. And I was like, fuck. And I, you know, just didn't want to or or have the money. But when you nobody do it, sets aside entire laptop on a Monday surprise money. No, that was yeah. No laptop on a Monday surprise money existed in my bank account. But you know, you figure it out. Go on a payment plan. Do what you got to do. Now I have this beautiful laptop that like. I like that it automatically assigned a hockey stick and puck to me as my personal emoji. That's pretty cool. That feels cool to me. It's like, oh, it knows I'm Canadian. That's cool. And um, (laughs) oh, I took it as it it knows that we record this podcast together, and I'm a hockey player. (laughs) You think that's about you? You think my computer is about you? Yeah. Oh, you think my new computer (laughs) that has never met you is about you? Wow, Mike, that's Sorry. amazing. It's something. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's great. I don't know. Oh, and so, but what happened to your hard drive? I don't know. I true. It does. It just like went away. It just shit the bed. It bit the dust. It crapped the bucket. Whatever the fuck you want to say. And it was completely hooked up to Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> yes, like the worldwide outage. So, yeah. are you the cause of social media's yes. collapse? I am the cause of the global panic surrounding the absolute collapse of society basically because facebook and instagram just didn't exist for a day yes fucking awesome so a little bit of a thank you is what we should all be saying to you huh yeah you're welcome you're welcome what up mary j how's it going mike good thank you for your help you're uh, i'm very happy to provide some relief from the internet (laughs) (laughs) welcome to weed and grub everyone this is a podcast about comedy cannabis culture cooking calling shit out and computers and computers (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And technology in general. Truly, you know? especially with our guest today, EDM right. um, rock star Kalina Zander. So, so it's all right there. Exciting, yeah. What What about your uh, cloud? Are you a cloud user? Oh, man, listen. Uh, my uh, Mike Daisy, our friend Mike Daisy, who was on the podcast recently, he was the first person, I think, like 10 years ago to send out a, like, a, a missive to just all friends. I think we just all got a text, and he was like, people, back your computers up. I'm telling you now. I'm sounding the warning bell. It's going to happen to you. You're going to lose everything. And I've always had his sort of like clarion call in my head back your fucking computer up. And I just hadn't backed my laptop up for some reason in the past couple of years. I, I, I had neglected to do so during the pandemic. I never do either. So when my uh, computer just all of a sudden was like, hi, nobody home, I was like, <laughs> oh no. But it turns out I do back up to the cloud. So most of what I have is intact and anything that's on my other computer that I can't retrieve, I don't even know what it is. So I think it's going to be okay. That's good. It's like I kind of just moved into a new house without packing up the old house and there's like some nice stuff in the new house and I'm okay with that like whatever shit was in the corners and the weird closets of my old house I didn't need it I didn't I don't remember what it was yeah the junk drawers yeah like that weird potato costume (laughs) I don't need that anymore I'm gonna move on I'm gonna get a new fun something else a zoo 
zucchini. Yeah, I'm in the market for an eggplant costume. Hey. Oh. <laughs> um, that's like a weird reference, but I, I, did, was. I did have a potato costume that I would put on and uh, show up at parties in I sometimes. could see you turning red because you know that an eggplant is a dick emoji and then yes. you would wear a dick costume. That's true. And I saw you immediately regret saying it as soon as you did. I should have said peach. <laughs> <laughs> for butts? Yeah. You like butts more than dicks? I just would if, prefer if, to be in a peach costume. Oh, yeah. You know, representing. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to rock, walk around looking like a eggplant. You want to rep the the butt. Yeah, weird choice. I don't know why I said that. I understand. It's because your apartment's too hot. It is hot in here. It's very hot. Which I think we should say before we uh, move on to a topic near and dear to both of our hearts. Uh-huh. Is that there was a couple of sound issues in this episode, uh, not just my neighbors, but also with like rustling and the wind because it is spooky season and the world is in chaos and we are all doing the best we can. Yep. So uh, apology, apologies t- to uh, to your ears if it's something where you're like, ah, ugh, we ah, did the best we could. Audio issues all the time. But you know what? We produce this podcast out of our homes, DIY Every week, I love doing it so much, and you know, I, I think we do a pretty good job of sounding great most of the time. And and occasionally, if there's a weird you know sound in the background, I hope people will let it slide because you know it's it's us doing it. We're just a, a small, scrappy, mighty team. Yeah. yeah, it's so funny when people are like, "Where do you guys record?" And it's like <laughs> in the middle of an empty studio apartment. Yeah. The, what do you want from us? It, <laughs> we have a bunch of wedding cake. On yep. the table, uh, both kinds. Yeah, <laughs> the the cake and the smoke, and it's a good hang. Yeah, we'll we'll get into a fancy studio soon. I I feel certain that it is coming, but for now we are uh, scrappy near Mike's neighbors who. I don't know what they do. I feel like they make fetish videos. They're very strangely loud at odd times of the day. It's it's only when we're trying to do something right. that they decide that it's time for them to also do something. And also it turned into Ghostbusters today. I was just at the dog park with Archie and there was all of a sudden one of those like zigzaggy forks of lightning that truly looks like out of a Hollywood movie and then the thunder boomed and then Archie told us we had to leave the dog park. He's a safety guy. Oh, yeah. And he led me back to the car, and he was like, we got to go to Mike's and record right now. He, he let me know, but it's total spooky season. Ghostbusters outside, rustling inside, ghosts in the walls. I think Bobo has it right. Bobo has it right. He just climbs into a bag like it's a goddamn shell and closes the <laughs> lid yeah. on life. He moved from the top of the trash can where he spent the summer into the Trader Joe's bag that I had on the floor for fall. <laughs> so it's bag season. It's bag season. <laughs> Happy bag season to all of your cats out there, everyone. What's up, bag season? What's going on? Coming to you from New York Bag Week. <laughs> fall 2021 bag season is upon us. What, what kind of bag are you in? <laughs> oh, it's just all the cats. <laughs> all cats Getting in different bags. bags. <laughs> That's really funny. You picture like a New York bag week with like, you know how they all sit in those folding chairs all like, you know, looking at everyone who's coming down the runway. All the fashion designers and celebrities. Yeah, yeah it would yeah. just be like Anna Winter, but she's in like a bag. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's watching like cats in bags. Like on a conveyor belt. Oh, that would be perfect. Because they're not going to walk, right? No. No cat. Uh, You can't walk in the bag. You can't walk in a bag. So it's just cats on conveyor belts. In the bag. (laughs) And they're all the different kind of bags. Like there's the the like uh, McQueen bag that's like ripped tartan. Mm -hmm. And then there's the like Balenciaga bag that's just like uber, like, you know, super beige and expensive. (laughs) So funny. That's really funny. Uh, Are the people watching Bag Week in New York, is Anna Winter a cat Anna Winter or is Anna Winter Anna Winter? Anna Winter's Anna. A winter. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. She cool. just shows up in a bag. It's like Kendall Jenner, Anna Winter, Cardi B. You know, all in all, bags. Everyone who does the front row, they're just in bags. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I love it because Bobo would be uh, would start off the week, start off the line. Yeah. I have no doubt. A Trader Joe's bag coming in strong. Yeah. Fucking Bobo, he's like Karl Lagerfeld. I mean, he is the Karl Lagerfeld <laughs> of cats. He's like a bony, mean motherfucker. Survival mm-hmm. instinct, high skills, Long beautiful nails, to look at. Beautiful to look at. Very gorgeous. Yeah. Yes. What What would be like, you know how Red Octobers are my kind of like grail shoe, my shoe that I love more than any of them? Oh, yeah. So what would be like a cat's grail bag to get into? The, uh... 
Like, would it be would it be like plastic, or would it be something puffy, or would it be like really rough and oh. shitty to be in for anyone except a cat? I love that. I think it would be like the Montclair bag. Yeah, it would be like number one bag <laughs> this season with all cats is the Montclair bag. <laughs> Caddy card Caddian, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or or maybe there's like a Virgil Abloh like clear bag that's really cool. Oh yeah, an off white bag. Yeah. Man, we I wish we who do we know at the New Yorker to draw this goddamn single panel cartoon <laughs> cat bag season in New York is a very funny New Yorker. Bag season, we should ask Joey, uh, Joe Ryan, to draw it for us. Yeah. Because he just started a Patreon. Oh, he did? Yeah, shout out. uh, Everyone should follow at Joe Ryan, J-O-R-I-O-N, on IG. He did our um, art for our Patreon, and he's an incredible artist and illustrator, and he just launched his own Patreon where you can get, like, discounts and behind the scenes, and he does, like, monthly challenges where he'll do Inktober or, you know, whatever. He's oh, yeah, he's in the middle of Inktober right yeah. now. Yeah. And for, for Inktober, he's, he, you know how he has uh, his character Space Penguin? Yeah. That really cute, cool penguin? He's yeah. doing, instead of drawings of Space Penguin for October, he's going to do an entire comic book story of uh, Space Penguin. So good. Yeah. He made one of my favorite books. Uh, it's called Bear's Great Day or Bear's Fine Day and it's just a sweet Alaskan bear like having a good day and each panel is him doing something different in the woods and it's just so lovely yeah and this is a good place actually for us to plug our Patreon I'd love to I'm yeah. really proud of it um, we have been doing a splainer series and it's been really nice people have been writing in asking for different topics for us to dive into we've done the endocannabinoid system terpenes we this just week, did distillate we just did distillate what the heck is distillate and it's been really neat to just hang out and dive into to one topic for these shorter episodes that we're dropping on our Patreon. So check us out at patreon.com slash weed and grub if you want to get those extra apps and uh, or otherwise just hang out with us here and listen yeah. to us without giving us any money. And this is another place to say if you want us to do a splainer on anything specific, hit us yeah. up in the DMs. Let us know. We love diving into stuff. We've got a cool series coming up on cannabis concentrates, I think. Uh-huh. And Thanks. if you don't think that the Montclair bag should be the bag of New York bag week, then what should <laughs> the bag be yeah is it rodart i mean who would your number one bag be for your cat to be in and maybe it doesn't even have to be a cat like our friend jordan has a bearded lizard or a bearded dragon true that you know what bag would he be in smog yeah. What's Smog hanging is out Is that in? a dragon? Yeah, Smog is her bearded dragon. Oh, that's her dragon's name too. It's the dragon from The Hobbit, but it's also her bearded oh. dragon. Oh, that's awesome. Who's currently coming through the wall of your house. Man, I gotta move. You and also, if me. anyone wants to get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, what do you? What about a tiger, though? Because that's... they. What would they be in? An Ikea bag? They One of those in, huge <laughs> Ikeas? They will, oh, yeah. They would have to... Like, it would, like Jeff Koons would have to design some like giant, <laughs> giant fucking tiger bag for the... You you know, a Damien Hurst. Now, that, those are just artists, not fashion. I don't know. Yeah, I think a huge Ikea bag. Do you know who uh, Andre Leon Talley is? No. He was, uh, he worked with, he was like Anna Winter's right-hand man at Vogue. He's this like incredible, um, like a fashion historian and artist. And he always wears these like super voluminous, really big outfits. He's a really big guy. Oh, I love so I that. Like I love big, big outfits. Huge. Like yes. he would show up and strut the runway and like just these massive like cloaks and capes and everything just like took up a lot of space because he's a big person and huge outside person, outsized personality. I feel like he would design a, an excellent tiger bag. That's fucking cool. <laughs> well, do you want to get to our news this week? Happy bag season, everyone. And yes, let's get to our news. Oh, wait, I have to use my fingerprint to unlock oh, my new computer that now knows cool. who I am with my fingerprint. Do, are you going to get the upgrade where they do the blood prick? Oh, God, no. No? Is, or the uh, retina exist? scan? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <Ooh>. No, thank <laughs> you. Okay. Oh, you want to get to the news? Yeah. All right. The Grubla Gazette, which is our news, is presented by OCB Rolling Paper, the largest rolling paper brand in the world, crafted naturally since 1918. OCB offers a full line of plant-to-puff papers made with sustainable fibers farmed from within a 500-kilometer radius of their facility in France, which is powered by 100% green energy. <laughs> In 2020, OCB rolled out America's first ultra-thin, slow-burning bamboo rolling papers and cones. They're even burning, no-tear, GMO-free, and vegan. Not all rolling papers are created equal. OCB offers a premium smoking experience that we call Harmony on High. (laughs) Ask for OCB wherever you buy your rolling papers and sample the entire line of products. Plus, visit OCBUSA.com and follow OCB on Instagram at OCB underscore USA. Quick personal story. Yes. Uh, I did stand up at that birthday party, and because they all work in the weed industry, I brought some 
cones and rolling papers to the birthday person and said happy birthday also brought weed i wasn't just you know what i'm saying um but they were like oh my god ocb i love these so it was a great gift and with the holidays coming up stuff a stocking stuff a stocking with some papers and cones yeah great idea what's our news this week Mary our Jane? news in the grub gazette this week is coming to us from Mar- bleh, marijuana moment.net uh we love those guys and this is a story about a GOP Pennsylvania senator with a federal law enforcement background who has filed a marijuana legalization bill. So I know like the, the hackles go up right mm-hmm. away, right? And Immediately. you're like, wait a second, this is some bandwagony shit. But For let me, profit nonsense. Right. So, so let me just read a little bit from the article. This Republican senator from Pennsylvania has announced that he will be filing a bill to legalize cannabis in Pennsylvania, and he's asking his colleagues to join them in the effort. He uh, chairs a key committee with jurisdiction over law enforcement issues, and he characterized legalization as, quote, inevitable. So he's circulating a memo to build support for this forthcoming legalization um, measure. So he, he wrote in this memo... Uh, His name is Mike Regan. He wrote, I had the opportunity to work in federal law enforcement at the height of the drug war, so I know the seriousness of drug use. But I'm also cognizant that there has been a significant decline in arrests and prosecutions for personal use amounts of marijuana in recent years. So he's sort of saying, I'm seeing the writing on the wall. Arrests are declining. You know, the legalization is inevitable. Why don't we get ahead of this and sort of control the narrative in the situation? Um... The crazy thing is because he's former law enforcement, right. he's, you know, added to the drug war. He's enforced these unfair laws and he has criminalized possession and he has penalized use and he has probably put people in prison. I mean, I obviously don't know his record, but if you're a part of that machine, then it's you're you're one way or another. You are right. So it yeah. can feel a little bit like, ah, too little, too late. Fuck you, hypocrite. Also, the other side of it is like, oh, great. Someone's coming around. I mean, we've had this conversation on here many times before where people are like, you know, if you're just calling people hypocrites for changing their minds, then there's no room for people to change their minds. That's a very good point. Right? That's a very good point because I <laughs> don't I don't remember that. Right. So I hear law enforcement and I hear like, oh, no. Oh, former cop, fuck you. Yeah. Because you sent people to prison for smoking a plant that you're now trying to legalize. So what? You can... Absolve <laughs> your perfect <laughs> and make some cash. <laughs> But yes. so, but <clears throat> truly, I think the conversation now, especially the way it's going in this country, you know, we need everyone on board. We need everyone who has historically been opposed to cannabis to come around and support cannabis. That means that people are going to have to change their minds. And I don't think it's fair <laughs> for us to just paint them all with the brush of like, hey, yeah, flip flopping, hypocrite, whatever. You know, we, we need to give space to people who are changing their minds. And, you know, it sounds like he... Uh, at least his talking points, I guess I should say, are, you know, towards supporting um, uh, social equity and inclusion and helping people get business entry into the industry. Um, He also wants to establish a new regulatory control board and protect the current medical marijuana program. So this would legalize consumption for adult use, but also leave in place the medical program that exists. Um, So it's interesting. But Okay, please. Well, I was just going to say, um, he, under his proposal, the portions of tax revenue, which is such an important p- part of how each state legalizes, like where does the tax money go to? Mm-hmm. Under his proposal, portions of the taxes would support law enforcement and also after school programs for disadvantaged youth. But on the other side of the aisle, there are some Democratic lawmakers, two Democrats who have unveiled a legalization bill that they would like to propose that prioritizes social equity for communities most harmed by the war on drugs. So it's, you know, there there's legalization moving in Pennsylvania. It depends on who you support. But the, the conversation is happening. That's great. I would also, and uh, I'm going to defend him a little bit here, mm. because I do think if he's proposing this bill and he didn't fund back to like his union and his officers and the police people um it wouldn't be taken seriously it probably wouldn't get to where it is today if he didn't say this is where the tax money needs to go because he probably my guess is needed the backing and support of those groups to get it where it is and now knowing that other people take another stance and say this tax money should absolutely go to other things there will be a conversation and a negotiation and somewhere in the middle everything will be met um but the conversation had to start yep on all fronts, I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if it takes uh, conversations with law enforcement and people that we, you know, find tricky to move the conversation forward, I mean, this is again like, you know, Snoop Dogg entering into conversation with uh, the Coke 
brother, surviving Coke brother. I can never remember which one it is. Charles. Charles Coke. You know, it's like, whoa, that's a, that's a deal. That's a handshake that I wouldn't want to make. But maybe that is what it takes. Yeah. I would also say that I'm starting to learn how much I assumed people knew that um, like prison and incarceration is a huge point of this. And I'm learning slowly that, and I don't want to speak for Pennsylvania. I've never been to Pennsylvania. I don't know what Pennsylvania is like, but I imagine there's people in that state, like every other state, that don't know that the drug war and these people wrongfully incarcerated is still happening today. They're just sitting there in prison. They need to get out. And so something like this is hopefully educational to everyone, even if they are anti-cannabis. They, right. can, they can at least know now that people... So lives have been ruined because of this plant and that's just not right. So we need to make that change. Yep, absolutely. And I think it is becoming more and more widely reported, thank God, that the you know disproportionate harm that this does to communities of color, that black and brown people are the ones who really suffer these prison sentences and are incarcerated at a much higher rate. Uh, that, you know, when you're reading that Sunday New York Times above the fold uh, profile of that CBD company that was opened up by that nice white woman, like, mm -hmm. you know, that is a big part of the mainstream media narrative to normalize weed. The, you know, the equally important or the more important part to report is like who's still in jail, who has been harmed by this and who deserves reparations more than anyone once we all have access to legal cannabis. Absolutely. And as soon as we stop recording this pod, I'm going to look up Justin Bieber's new line and see yeah. what their give back policy is because I want to know what's up with Peaches and what they're doing. I just got a press release about it and we can talk about it either on the Patreon or next week. Um, it's, they are, uh, they definitely have a program. I don't think there is any company trying to move into this space right now that doesn't have some kind of social equity and inclusion program. Um, and his line I know is specifically um, giving back to mental health initiatives. Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. Right on. This is a bright shiny news this week <laughs> yeah. that's really good when it's... you also when you said above the fold in the new yorker and you were talking about cbd mm -hmm. i did immediately think about cat bag and uh <laughs> that was a pretty fun little connection to make in my head bag season <laughs> it's bag season baby <laughs> gotta get a picture of bobo in his bag and put it on instagram because man let's do it he's oh crazy. man like this is when i wish i had enough money to buy a magazine like cat fancy just oh. so that I could like have, you know, monthly issues that lean into cat culture like this. Were you ever a fan of Smashing Pumpkins? Of course. Do you remember when Billy Corgan was on the cover of Cat Fancy? No way. Yep. That's true, cool. True statement of fact. He, <laughs> it was amazing. I think he was holding two cats Ooh, on the cover of, of Cat Fancy and no joke. He was just like, oh my God, Cat Fancy is so cool. Damn, I would feel like I'd made it if I got to be on a magazine like that. It would be fun as fuck. Any magazine cover. I yeah. would take any magazine cover. That would be so fun, you know? <laughs> Well, we have so much to get to this week, but also we have an amazing guest. Do you want to get to Buds of the Week? Oh, wow. Yes. Are I, we cooking too quick for I, you? I don't know. I think that's perfect timing. Okay. You just said we have so much to get to, and then you're like, but we'll get to the interview. So that confused me. Let me say it again. Okay. Do you want to do Buds of the Week? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> This week, Buds of the Week are brought to you by Lake Grade, craft cannabis that is sustainably sun-grown under the blue skies of Lake County, California. Lake Grade's five proprietary strains are cultivated by local growers who have dedicated their lives to clean and sustainable growing practices. Every harvest is rack-dried and carefully hand-trimmed from 16-foot-tall cannabis trees. Wow. Lake Grade gives back to communities in two ways. First, by supporting Last Prisoner Project and the important work they're doing, which we were just talking about, to help free those incarcerated for cannabis-related activities that are no longer illegal. Second, Lake Grade donates each month to reforestation efforts in the fire-damaged areas of California through one tree planted. Every eighth you buy will plant a tree. Lake Grade is available at Sweet Flower and High Times Dispensaries, as well as on Ease.com. Follow them at Lake Grade on Instagram and visit them at LakeGrade.com, and there's a link in our bio on Instagram to uh, buy the them on ease and also in the show notes. Absolutely. I would also just like to shout out the care that they put into late grade. Mm -hmm. Hand trimmed, such a big deal. Yeah. Giving back, such a big deal. Sustainably Replanting grown. trays. Sustain Come yeah. on, y'all. Working with local growers, all that kind of stuff. This yeah. is not big ag. This is like a, a cool company that is really carefully, um, carefully cultivating who they work with and also uh, what pods they like. 100%. We love you guys. Yeah, thank you, Lake Grade. And if you do like us, please support the companies that support us, like Lake Grade. That's 
That's right. Do you want to go first or second on Bud of the Week this I'm, week? Oh, I got to come out hot. I'm going first. Okay, come out hot. It's at Smoke Sip Saver on Instagram. Please follow Rachel Burkons if you don't already. She was a wonderful guest when she was here on our podcast a little while back. And I just recently went over to her house for this like fall brunch where she had this absolutely magical spread of amazing food and cannabis products because we had gone to Hall of Flowers and we were like, let's hang out. And then she was like, well, bring over your favorite stuff and we'll do like a show and tell. So I brought my favorite stuff and Rachel had her favorite stuff and Christina Wong baking with chickens also joined us and brought her favorite stuff. And the three of us just got lit and had like (laughs) so much fun having a show and tell. And Rachel and I own the same tiger jumpsuit uh, that we'd both gotten at World Market. And so we put them on and did a little photo shoot. And it was just so fun. And That's a real bud. She's just a real bud and a really cool person and doing so much neat stuff in, in weed. So give her a follow at Smoke Sip Saver. Love it. Also, shout out to jumpsuit season. Hell yes. I'm living in jumpsuits right now. They're all awesome. Onesie, onesies all day. Onesies all day. Mm-hmm. It's onesie season, not it's, jumpsuit season. It's, it's onesie season if you're a human and you walk around on two legs. And if you're a cat, it's bag season. <laughs> <laughs> My butt of the week this week is friend of the show, James Mastriani. James is a great comic, a great improviser, and a big stoner. And he just started something that is a long time coming, and it's a comedy co-op theater here in Los Angeles. I don't know if anybody listening knows what it's like to try and do comedy and be a part of the theater scene, but you'll ha- you'll have to spend thousands of dollars on classes. It's pay to play. Uh, you don't get paid to perform anywhere, but you do it for free, but you see no revenue from ticket sales, no revenue from the bar. And the goal is you get your chops and then you get discovered and then you make a ton of money on TV and all this shit, but you don't get any money for doing the thing you love Mm. until James who created the comedy co-op and they've sold out their first two shows. They had a huge article in the LA times. Amazing. And so with all of these theaters in Los Angeles closing UCB, second city, IO West, Mm -hmm. uh, the pit closed in New York, York. Mm -hmm. to be frank, Long time fucking coming, and now for people like James and the comedy community to take those theaters back, and then if you perform there, you get paid. It is owned by the performers. It's a socialist theater, and I'm just like really proud of him, and I'm really proud of where comedy, theater, and culture is headed. So thank you, James. Please follow him at jmaz1111, and from there, you can read about the comedy co-op and uh, support it if you can. Archie says support it. Archie says support it too. (laughs) You just made me think, you know what, uh, there's this incredible period in um, theater history when theaters in England were shut down by this horrible man named Cromwell for about 40 years. And there was just no theater. Like all the traveling troops, all the Shakespearean, everything that was happening was shut down. And when the when everything opened back up again, that is a period called restoration. And that was when like all these brilliant comedies happened and women were allowed to be on stage for the first time. And it was truly a restoring of the art of theater. And this whole thing that's happening right now with everything shutting down and, you know, the pandemic sort of like sweeping and making things really hard. It feels like this is a restoration period with people coming back and being like, we're going to do it differently. We're going to own it differently. We're going to have different stuff to say. Get the fuck out of here with your bigoted, prejudiced, bullshit jokes. Yep. And your gatekeeperisms. Yep. It's neat. So that's really exciting, especially leading into our interview with Kalina, because I just feel like she's also like burn it to the ground and do it your way. Do it my way, but also you're going to have a great time doing it with me. Yeah. I think that's really her. I've known her for such a long time. And now to see her blow up globally, like worldwide blow up. Yeah. It's really remarkable. So let me give a like near and dear to my heart intro of Kalina Zanders, a.k.a. the female Blanca, a.k.a. the EDM Whoopi Goldberg. I am DMT. She, her, they go to her show on October 7th at Bar Lubitsch here in Los Angeles. You don't want to miss it. Kalina is an amazing musician. She has an incredible, powerful voice. And I we talk about it in the interview, but I will just say, when I saw her perform at the Viper Room, I was like, oh, I'm witnessing something incredibly special by some, like, there is something channeling through her that is making this whole place rock. You got the tingle. Yo, got the tingle. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. And also, please stick around till the end. Not that you wouldn't anyway, but I, I just, I don't know why I say it like that. Um, at the end of this episode, we're going to drop a track of hers that we talk about. Um, so anyway, no, October 7th, catch her at Bar Lubitsch. Listen to her track at the end of this app. Go on SoundCloud. 
go on Instagram, follow Kalina everywhere, and uh, I just like her so much. Me too. This was a great convo. 100%. All right. Without further ado, here is our interview with Kalina Zanders. Kalina, it's only been 900 years since we've seen each other. Yes. And uh, I just want to start by saying congratulations on making your dreams happen because Ooh. it is wild to like, God damn, you just rocked Boise. Yes. And they, they are still rocked. Like what is happening in your life? I don't know. I'm just, I think I'm just starting to show up and, you know, stand, stand in spaces on, on stage. And then the, I just go, Wah! and then people like it. I don't know. There's nothing else to do in life except achieve your dreams. I think ever since I had that sort of like realization slash mushrooms, like it just kind of just <laughs> Did you for real have like a mushroom moment that yeah. opened up your ability to, okay, let's yeah, go. Yeah, several yes. actually. My first time I like cried, I had like, you know, the ego death. I felt like I was in the Truman show. You know how you like finds the end of the, 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 the master, whoever's like controlling him. And like, yeah, I felt like I saw like the world as like this big prop stage thing. You know, like I, I really felt that I was in Joshua Tree and that was like the beginning of like opening a lot of um, just like truth I, I suppose and then um yeah just over time just kind of breaking down all these like little walls and just you know I, I think you start to get into this like game of like how honest can I be or like how you know truthful can I be in my art all those things and I think I think I just I just kept trying for that and and then I was did yoga a bunch and then yeah the mushrooms kind of kept opening up things I've even like made like music videos like afterwards like to make them like I don't know it looks like I have these epiphanies so yeah do you guys do mushrooms we, yes. t- we do it a lot and we talk about it a lot oh. so it's so cool yeah, to yeah. talk with another artist who they've become a tool toward towards your goals yeah. yeah they really have I I love the idea of of sort of like just abandoning all attempts to tell anything other than the absolute truth yeah yeah like just fully focused on your truth and what is true yeah which is of course all relative but yeah. it's your truth. I was going to say even in that though like some people it, I've learned to like instead of being so outward with it and like trying to tell everybody like I guess how they should live or what they should do or give advice I like I put it all back on on myself um because I realized that the truth can be very potent whatever version of it you believe, you know what I mean? And not everybody believes the same way you do, you know. So I like, I literally had to tell myself to just like practice what I like preach and feel and discovered. That's what mushrooms, did. not to make it so deep, but that's what mushrooms did it for me. So I mean, if we didn't go deep off jump, what are we even doing <laughs> I know. here? Um, when I was younger, I was in musical theater and I didn't like it. I didn't understand like why my mom would put me in it. But I realize now being on stage, why that was so important to like my, my life um, but, uh, yeah, so like I was, I was terribly like shy and I would cry before every performance, like when I was little and then, um, but then every time I was on stage, I would light up and I would just go for it. And like, there was an element of that that I really loved, you know? Um, but I didn't like, like musical theater itself. Like I didn't, I don't, it was cheesy to me even as a kid. And then I played a bunch of sports and then got into a rock band. And that to me was like my musical theater, you know? And so, I, and also I was really angsty and angry too as a teen. So I think like having that balance of being able to channel, channel that on stage and then, you know, bringing it to now where I'm much older and just like more chill. Now it's just having fun with everybody, you know? And like, thank God you have had that training when I was young to be able to like see a crowd and not be freaked out. I mean, I used to, I used to like, there was a small moment in time where like, I couldn't, I thought I couldn't sing. I don't know. It was like really weird. Maybe it was just me trying, needing to learn more. I don't know. But it was, it was right in the beginning of college. I, I, I was, I uh, auditioned for a play 
And the director is like, oh, well, you could you could sing like there's a singing moment. And I was just like I would I would cry, freak out, nerves, all the things and like basically go out there and just like close my eyes and then like sing. But like, I don't know. I just think um, I don't know. I've, I've evolved into something and it all somehow makes sense now. You know, it's just like. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what I was saying, but I kind of lost what my train of thought. But like the, the <laughs> well, but the like the way you describe your childhood to now, yeah, it almost feels like divine or Look, inevitable. Oh, is this gonna be seen? Oh, we can just send us a pic of it. We'll put it. Mm. Oh, it what it says, divine. Mm. Yo, yeah. Wow. Yeah. A lip huh. tattoo. Yeah. That says divine. Yeah. So it is. Yes, I got this in college actually. Too. Now, I think a lot of awakening happened, like weird awakening happening in college. Not quite mushroom awakening, but just like little things I felt like were telling me like messages, divine, the divine energy, you know? I, my dad told me and my, my stepmom told me, they're like, yeah, one day you like sang the whole way to Vegas from, it was like from Oakland to Vegas and it was like nine hours. And, and the, they were like, we wanted to shut you up, but we just didn't want to break your spirit. And I was like, whoa, I was like that, that could have like, you hear those stories of like, you hear those stories of like, my parents, they told me to not skateboard or like, I, whatever. I don't know. All these like weird little things that like stay with you as, as an adult and why you don't do certain things. And I'm like, wow, like if in that moment for nine hours, you guys had to hear me singing, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's insane. Um, but but uh, but I'm appreciative for those moments because, like, you know, when I started to go through, like, you know, just weird high school stuff and just, yeah, like, being sad and all those things, like, that that became a tool for me to express. And then my mom had put this, like, piano in our garage and I would go out there and, like, plunk on it and, like, kind of, like, listen. I would go to, like, Tower Records and, like, pick up, like, all these different songs and try to, like, play them and... And then she'd be like, why are you always playing that sad music? And I'm like, because I'm fucking sad, bro. Like, you can't, like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm sad. Like, your music is so joyful. Yeah. Though. Like, what, yeah. or at least what you're making now. I don't know what you were making at the time, but like, oh, you're, yeah. that's hit the dance floor, like, yeah. hands in the air. Yeah. You know, to pure joy. So, yeah. have you also dabbled in making, like, more emotional? Other, yeah. Yeah, actually, I have a whole, um, I have a whole visual EP that I made. Um, it's like a little mini, mini movie. I call it my lesbian aid. Like, you know, how, uh, Beyonce has her lemonade at my lesbian aid. Um, <laughs> and like, um, yeah, it, it's about my, my relationships. Cause yeah, I, I haven't spent much time as an artist. You know, I'm always making people happy. I'm always assisting things. I'm always like, you know, the girl on the tracks. I'm, I'm always, yeah, I'm very much, you know, running around like helping other people, which has been amazing. And I love that. But now, like, I definitely want to tell my story and my love relationship because it's been a huge part of of me, especially in the last three years, like, because I've been going, well, well, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying what I was about to say. Okay. <laughs> Talking about being so honest. Um, but but basically, I mean, I can say some things, but um, I feel like in relationships, a lot of times, well, in the lesbian relationship, a lot of times people don't understand that it could be just like a heterosexual relationship where... Or what they what people perceive as a heterosexual relationship uh infidelity there's you know just the regular mundane feeling trapped there's all those things that you can feel and i in in a relationship and in a lesbian relationship and i was i just want to showcase and put that that voice first or show you know like show like you know yeah, i'm a lesbian but i have problems basically you know do you feel pressure to be like a model lesbian like Front facing um, camera, like perfect relationships, and we, yeah, we, all we do is kiss, yes. and dance, and move in yeah. and move in with each other, and everything is great. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yes, that's that's exactly what this is about. Like the first song is called "On Paper," and "On Paper" is like literally like everyone thinks me and my girlfriend have the best relationship. They're like, "Oh my god, you guys can never break up." I'm like, "Oh my god!" And like, meanwhile, I'm like <laughs> freaking out because. You know, there's a lot of other things that happen too. I kind of fell in love with someone else too. So it's like both things existing. And that's what this piece is about is is experiencing two women. And it's been a tough road. <laughs> Fine, but hectic. Yeah. And also on top of me wanting to be a free person, like, sorry for that noise. 
Um, I also, I love to be free. I love to express. I love, I don't, you know, I'm the kind of person that would, you know, skinny dip in a pool. You know, I'm like, like, uh, I'll kiss somebody at the club. Like I'm very like open. So like, you know, being in relationships and navigating that at one point I thought I was like poly, but then like, I don't think I'm quite like that. You know, it's just all of these different things have been going on in the past three years of like sexual discovery and even me being I'm usually more of a top in the relationship like and in this other situation I was more of a bottom which is I'm this feels great to talk about this out loud but um which is very awesome and it it's taught me a lot about how I want to exist in my life what was the song that kind of broke you and just like was played all over the world it was called California um it was in 2015 and that's what I that's how I got into dance music even though I wasn't really into it at the time and um yeah i went and sang for like 30 minutes in the studio and then and then he oh he actually gave me some mushroom uh cookies and then i was like thanks man cool and then like i left and then like eight months later it was like the biggest track all over what about let's go i I gotta go back i've been sitting on it and since i we scheduled this dang thing because the first time i saw you perform was I think at the Viper Room, if that sounds right. It was either Roxy or the Viper Room. I get those clubs confused. I think it's the it was block. the Viper Room. It was the Viper yeah. Room and it was upstairs. Yeah. And the crowd was like not I think it was a part of a bigger bill. Yes. And the crowd was not feeling the other folks on the bill. Yeah. And then you came out and started rocking it and then you climbed up on a pool table and then you climbed up on the bar and you were headbanging and the whole place was like thank fucking god let's go (laughs) and it was wild and i was like yo kalina is on another level like i had just gotten to la i didn't know that this is a place where if you crush like that like things can change your life and you fucking rock that viper room it was wild wow was it with them a girl was it with Chauncey? Like, was a girl there? Man, I'm not gonna remember anyone yeah. but you. Okay. I can't. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trying to remember because if it was the Viper Room, I remember that. That was amazing. Yeah, it was some Marvel superhero shit. Like, you know, where they punch the ground and it shockwaves out and shakes all the buildings. <laughs> you know, you know, it's my dream to be a superhero in an actual Marvel film. Fucking, that would yeah. be so cool I, to I, see you land on the concrete, Ooh. dude. <laughs> 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 yeah. Are you traveling to perform again now? Is the things open back up? And yeah. Back on the road? Yeah. How is um, it? It's it's fine. It's I think people are extra pumped. You know, they're extra pumped that like they get to go out again. So, and then going out, people excited to go out, and then combined with like some good talent, it, like you know, it's like instant fans. You know, instant engagement. Um, it's been great. I gotta ask you a question about. Um, about like the state of music because it feels really cool to be able to talk with someone who's on who's like in the industry and blowing the fuck up and traveling all over and rocking huge crowds but I like coming up and listening to music it was all about like the album and then a couple hit singer singles and then those singles play on the radio Mm -hmm. and then they gain traction and then you have a music video on MTV Mm -hmm. and it's like boom 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 Mm -hmm. but now like motherfuckers are releasing snippets of freestyles on TikTok and and so like what like what the fuck is happening and is it good and where are we at and what the fuck is going on yeah like yo yo I have this I just had this conversation yesterday too like like TikTok has been great for exposure, you know what I mean? And like, you know, things you wouldn't imagine have blown up, but it also has damaged like the quality of music, you know, cuz like you're hearing snippets, it's usually never mixed or, you know, mastered, it's usually just some gimmicky joke thing that people like, you know, do challenges or, you know, just do whatever to. And um and also being an artist who's a little bit of, I would say, like a purist and who, you know, I used to crate dig and, you know, love, you know, six and seven minute songs. And, you know, it it took a, a, I would say, a solid year and a half for me to to pivot and to like like doing TikTok and to to like the progression of where things are going. You know, I mean, I, I still don't like it, but I think it's way more fun now. And it's not about it's not about like the music. It's about you as a person, you know, it's like, and I think I can do, I can nail that if 
I can just learn to be even more free, you know, in, and not because I mean, I, I, I'm I appear that I'm free, but like I am quite like, you know, I like to control my own environment, you know, things like that and make sure that, you know, I'm a little less like it's all calculated kind of, you know what I mean? Like on on the Internet. Um, but if I can even free up more and, and give more gifts and whatever, it, it will all it's all, it's more fun. So. I, I don't like I don't like it and and but I also know that it's really important if you want to stay in today's world doing stuff and I do and, that, and that's the kind of the conversation I had to say do you want to be just doing your music however or do you want to play with play with everyone else and I do I, I absolutely do I just look at all of the artists whose disciplines have been boiled down to something for TikTok like dance mm-hmm. I, I just think how crazy it must be to be a dancer who moves in three dimensional space yep. and tells a story with your body and all of a sudden you're watching your entire art form get boxed yeah. into one weird little thing and yep. I, I can only imagine that being a musician must feel similarly like what's well, happening. <laughs> one thing that it is forcing me to do, though, is learn more um, skills. So, like, I have um, my DJ set, or I have my DJ equipment now, and I've been practicing. Because what, what people like nowadays, they like that you're, like, one hub and that you can do a lot of d- different things. It's kind of a cool thing and not so cool because if, you, if you've been practicing your one profession for a long time and then you're like, I have to go learn something else. But it is unique to see how... People just gravitate towards one person and they're like, oh, it's so cool that they can play guitar and then they can sing or they can, you know, play. Oh, this guy, he like plays drums and freestyles. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of cool like things that you can do, especially as you grow older and like learn and then like and then showcase it immediately. I think that's that's the way that it is cool. That's cool. You're making me think about, yeah, like people who are the the more specific you get yes. like the more weirdly specific yes. you get the better off you're going to be yes yeah absolutely awesome. and um it's like tiktok is kind of a like it's a freak show it really is um but <laughs> within that freak show like where are you you know what i mean so it's it's fascinating it became fascinating it was it, if you had talked to me a year and a half ago i would have been it'd been a whole different story but <laughs> <laughs> i think for me the hesitancy is getting boxed into that distillation i i find that to be insulting as a like yeah. multi-dimensional it human is. being i'm like don't tell me what to do china i'm not falling in line with your one thing and one thing only bullshit that's yeah. how i feel about it and yeah. it's a struggle so it's cool to hear you just talk about that yeah it's it i'd rather but I'd, i i mean there are things that i will do and won't do and i feel like this is uh not that not that much to do it's like you know what i mean it's just and it's a moment in time i feel like too Mm -hmm. i mean you know it's 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 a it's a window that we're in right now we're in that tiktok yeah we're the tiktok exactly two years from now we'll be in some other Um, hellscape and they're gonna start (laughs) yeah and they're gonna start making um tv shows for tiktok too you know like little you know like it's all you just have to think of it's like a mini youtube you know yeah, that's what it is. It's in, like, and it has more watch time now than than YouTube. Damn. Well, we have the number one podcast called Weed and Grub, so we got to talk a little bit about Weed okay. and Grub. Yes. Let's go. The one thing that I'm always thinking about is ribs. Always, I'm always thinking about meat. Lately, I've been trying to cut back on a lot of things because I noticed that I get fussy and cranky and weird, and I might I feel headachey now when I eat anything. So um, now it's like juices and you know. I made like a celery juice this morning with apples and ginger and, you know, things like that. Well, you made it at home? Yeah. Yeah, I made it at home. And I'm just, I I just want to be like, I want to have that same power that like people see on stage. Like now I want to have that forever. So I'm starting to like finally make the connection and like physically like do something healthy. But if, but it's hard. It's real fucking hard. We're yeah. on Weight Watchers right now. We talk about really? it on the podcast all the time. For real. Because it's like the world's opening back up, not feeling great, Mm-mm. trying yeah. to shine a little brighter, you know? Yeah. yeah. What's that like, Weight Watchers? Thank it's fucking God. Sorry. Please. Great. No, I mean, I was just talking over you because it's working, you know? It's, for me, the, um, the th- you know, sort of slow and steady, just really trying to, it's not about a number or anything really other than sort of like just taking account of what I'm doing to my body Mm. and just being really mindful about it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, slowly seeing the results in my 
body and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. interesting. If you just like actually watch what you put into your body. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Get results. Not to go, not to be crazy, but TikTok has taught me a little bit about health. Like, because they showed one TikTok that I saw in particular, they showed a diagram of like, if you eat like fried foods and then like it clogging up like certain like arteries and things. And then I was like, oh my God. And like seeing that visual, I was just like, okay, I can't be eating like that, you know? And yeah. then, um, and then there was another one. Oh, a lot of people, um, vegans and like, you know, health people will get on there and scare you and it's, and it scares <laughs> me and I love it. Um, but yeah, I, oh, but let's go back to the fun part. Cause there is one, there is one thing that I have a crazy addiction to and that's, um, Cineholic. They're, they're vegan, but they, they taste like Cinnabon, like the legit what? Cinnabon. Yeah. Like legit. Yeah. What the like, fuck are yeah. you talking about? Where do you get them? What um, are we doing? This is in Echo Park, Silver Lake. And I swear to God. And they're only open from like 12 noon to 10 p.m., which is so weird because you would think they would open for breakfast because they're like, you know, cinnamon rolls. But I literally think I, that's the other thing I think about. If it's not ribs, it's that. <laughs> it's called what? Cineholic? Uh, Cineholic, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm on Instagram. Are you right Googling now. it right now? Yeah. Yeah, just. <laughs> I like I now that we're talking about it I literally probably have to go there tonight. Oh. Yeah. No. Oh shit, it's like verified. Um fi- all vegan 57 locations in the US and Canada. Yeah. Jesus I'm fucking Christ, Karina. Yes. Get happening. the get the original. I just honestly I'm I love food. You wow. Know? Mm-hmm. Do you like weed and if you like weed do you like it in your food sometimes? Um so I don't smoke weed. Um because well, my experiences with it have been very strange. I was one of those people who I had a brownie a long time ago, and I was one of those people who called my friend and said I was dying. I was one of those people, mm-hmm. and so I I don't um, I don't eat it, but I'm a big advocate for it. Like I think it's amazing, and I wish that I could like I wish I could smoke it. I wish I could be a part of it in that way. Um, mm-hmm. And then, oh my God, and the first time I did it was crazy too. So like, um, I thought this girl was like the devil and like, whatever. So <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah. I had some really strange, like intense things, but then like, I love that people do it. I love it. Yeah. Edibles at a, at a super, like that brownie experience, like, yeah, it's just, you know. Yeah. Why is it no like joke. that? What's up with that? So I, uh, I write about weed and yeah. um, I've learned a lot about edibles in the last like year or so writing about yeah. them. And one of the things about eating it instead of smoking it is that your body actually metabolizes it and turns it into a more potent form of THC. It metabolizes through your liver. Mm-hmm. And also what happens is because it takes a long time, the onset is a couple of hours until it actually hits your system. People will actually often eat more than they right. need because they don't feel it. Right. So it's that like overconsumption in addition to it being more potent is yeah. that like wild experience where you're like the walls are breathing this is uh, not so fun right oh yeah <laughs> no i'd rather take like two tabs of acid and then you know then never do that and enjoy the walls breathing. Enjoy the walls breathing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally yeah i don't know like but i love i love the weed culture i love everybody like i love all the different like companies that have sprung up recently i love the like i people give them give it to me all the time so i I, I definitely welcome it, and then I give it as gifts to my friends. I, also, because I sing too, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't smoke. But I, I wish that I, I really wish that I can like have that as a conversation piece because I love to, you know, I love to drink, I love to like hang out with people, you know. It's so, like I wish that I, and uh, many of my friends smoke weed, but I can, I just, I just can't, you know. Maybe we should hang out, and maybe I can smoke like one thing or something. Or, like, yeah, that's great. Like, we'll, we'll put one like, we'll bring smidgen a care package. Yeah, yeah. But, cool. And I, I like do the it. idea of it. Because even if you don't enjoy it, then we'll just take acid and eat ribs, and it'll all be fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> oh, woo! Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, I got one more question for you, and it is when you start creating a new song, because you've had a bunch of music drop in this past year, mm-hmm. do you like working with new people all the time have you found your core and and within that do you usually start with like a line or do people play you beats and then one beat will get sticky to you like what's your process these days um well lately i found that i I do have like a core group of people that i like to work with um but i am always trying to expand that too because i don't like you know you get different 
inspirations from other people. I like to be in the studio with people and build tracks from the ground up. Cause I, I think of myself as a producer, even though like I don't do the knob turning or like, you know, like in the DAW, like moving stuff around. But like, I, I, I'm like, like Rick, how Rick Rubin would, you know, like suggest and like move around parts. And I know music pretty well. So I, you know, I know that. And I also, I have also been doing a lot of TV and licensing stuff so that's really fun because you don't have to think too hard you just kind of spit words out and then you know the beats created and whatever so that actually has been i think my saving grace for at least attempting to be creative this year and it has been good like i have i was i had a song uh in the super bowl that was awesome and um wow that's awesome yeah i'm super cool that's and one, fucking cool one of my songs this year was in the cw for batwoman that was cool. Wait, and Cribs too? Yeah, Cribs. Yeah. One of my songs wow. is in that, which is the, it's the relaunch of Cribs. So that's fucking like childhood dreams. Um, Wait, do you know who your Cribbers were? Yeah. They played your song? Tinashe, Mustard, and Kathy Griffin. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm so excited to hear this because I feel like music in TV is making TV right now. Like yeah. there have been some really good shows lately where yes. the score has just, I don't know. It's yeah. exciting to hear that we can hear more of your music on that platform. Yes. That is my goal is to be, is to do like um, Labyrinth. You know, Labyrinth, he did um, Euphoria. Um, like, I would love to like curate slash uh, be the music supervisor, you know, the artist that works with that TV show. Like, that's a huge dream of mine. Um, and it's possible. It's just, you know, about, about building your brand, you know, playing the shows, you know, being accessible all over the internet building that and then um you know then people will start to come come to you for that thing that sounds like the perfect place to do some plugs then so where can everyone find you because everyone should be fucking with you and also if you have a track that we should drop at the end of this app we should do that yes um you can find me at kalina zanders everything like just my name or at kalina zanders um and it's for twitter instagram tiktok youtube Literally, I'm the only Kalina Zanders in the world. Like, I'm, I've researched this. So if you can't find me, I, I don't understand, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, oh, yeah. And then the song is called On Paper from my, my lesbianade um, mini movie. Um, it is uh, called, the whole thing is called Everything We Have is Misaligned. And the first song is on paper, so boom. Boom. And you got tour dates? Well, I have a show coming up October 7th um, at um, we, Mus- we Found New Music at Barlu Bitch. And then I have a big show for a, a big artist who I can't say the last name, so I'm not going to say, say it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it doesn't matter, I guess, because this is my thing. But like um, Avalon, November 13th. And I'm very excited for that because it's going to be like a proper EDM show. And the artist who is the headliner is really big. And um, yeah, I'm just kind of, yeah, th- those are my shows. And then um, I'm going to be spending the rest of the year getting everything prepared for next year. <laughs> awesome. I can't wait to come and see your show. Yeah. I hope that uh, we yeah. can out. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, yeah. Really excited to see your music live because I've been jumping around my house. Uh, oh, hell yeah. It, so. yeah, the, yeah, the 13th will be a good one for that. Sweet. Awesome. Uh, find us at Weed and Grub on Instagram. WG at Weed and com is our email. Leave us a five star review. Someone just left one. I saw it. I haven't read it yet, but thank you for leaving them. Keep them coming. <laughs> and Kalina Zanders, you're fucking cool. And talk oh, to you, you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank this you. was awesome. Bye, thank everyone. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.